Good evening, guys. My name is Shannon Eady with Wives Empowered. Just coming to you for a few minutes for a 100 with the Wives session. Just wanted to talk a little real talk about um, who's more spiritual or who do you think is more spiritual in your marriage? You, your husband. Um, so lately I had um, talked to a couple of different women and the topic came up of who they felt was more spiritual. Hey, Denise, I miss you. That's my friend, Denise. <laughs> um, so it, the topic came up of who they felt like was more spiritual or I'll hear things that um, wives might say like, oh, well, my husband's not really as um, spiritual as me. Or things like, oh yeah, you know, I go to church, but he doesn't type of thing. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about this evening and just kind of keeping it 100 is like when you have that happen in your marriage, whether it is on the husband's side or the wife's side, really you should not be the one putting your spouse down because of something like that. Oh, I miss you too. Yes, please stay safe. I know things are opening back up, um, but I still... I'm not going out a whole bunch and hanging around a whole bunch of people because I'm like, mm -mm, y'all got cooties. I do not want to catch <laughs> anything. I've still been going to work this whole time. My husband's still been going to work this whole time. My kids have been at home and pretty much I'm just trying to, you know, be as safe as possible. So you guys, please, please, please stay as safe as possible. Love you so much, Denise, and miss you. Hey, Summer, I think that's your picture showing up. Um, this new live on Facebook, it kind of does not let us know all of who is on here. Hey, Lynette, how are you, honey? I'm sorry, the last time that we, you were on and I didn't get to talk, girl, it was late and I was going to bed. So I apologize <laughs> that we didn't get to chat before, but definitely um, we will get to chat soon. Um, and then Conrad did share your news. So congratulations. So um, just wanted to comment, um, come on and pop on real quick and just talk about like sometimes we have those moments of where one spouse will feel like they're more spiritual than the other. Um, you know, I've heard that from other wives. I've heard like the statement say, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm a little more spiritual than him or I'm a little more um, into it than him or I pray more than him. You know, I'm in my word more than him. Those different things are said. Sometimes, you know, a wife will say, well, my husband doesn't go to church. I don't know y'all what it is about when you get on a live and you get to talking and then your nose start like just going crazy. But um, I promise you, I do not have cooties. I don't have anything. Hey, Tori. Oh my gosh, Tori. That stink bug in my car. Y'all, I'm gonna have to just like do a sidebar real quick. So today at lunch, my coworker, Tori, went out to lunch with me and got in my car and this huge stink bug was sitting on her side in my car. And all of us freaked out. We finally got the stink bug out, or at least I thought. And I leave work at the end of the day, drive all the way home. I'm taking my bags out of the car. And what do I see sitting on the passenger side seat? Just chilling. This huge stink bug just sitting there. I mean, I screamed. I swatted. I mean, I told her, I said, listen, I don't even know what happened. I blacked out. I said, when I woke up, I had one shoe on. My ponytail was gone and that thing was smashed to pieces. But I'm telling you, like that thing was huge, but he's gone now. And so praise the Lord for that. But anyhow, um, getting back to my topic, see how y'all get me all off topic. But anyhow, um, so some of the things that I've heard from different wives, um, they talk about that, you know, I'm the spiritual one, things like that. But one of the things that um, you have to understand is that you can't put your spouse down for wherever they are spiritually, because there's sometimes a tendency for us to kind of pump ourselves up and like we walk on water and our spouse doesn't. But really, do you really know what their relationship is, their vertical relationship with God? You can't say for sure 100% that you are so much more holier than them. Hey, Janice, how are you? 
And so um, that's something that is really real in marriage. And even though we're not like going out to churches right now, um, you're at home, but the tendency is still there because like I said, you know, I talk with other wives and, you know, I hear things come up about, well, he's not doing this and he's not doing that. So I'm going to tell you about um, just in like the early stages of our marriage, um, both both me and my husband were both on ministry staff, both titles, both of us had titles, um, both of us working in the church. And then we're um, coming home and having these arguments. And then the arguments would turn into like this whole thing of um, throwing scriptures at each other. Just just stupid stuff, like really just dumb stuff. So we're throwing scriptures at each other and in the midst of this, um, I would like have different times that I would ask my husband, like, well, why don't you pray with me? And because he didn't, like literally because my husband didn't, when I asked him to at different times, I felt like, you know, spiritually he was like down here and I was up here because at least I was the one asking to pray. <laughs> And then there would be things like I hear other couples like, oh, we pray all the time together. We don't leave the house unless we pray together. And we read the word together on Saturdays, like all day long. And so I started to feel bad about my marriage. Hey, Tina, how are you? I started to feel bad about my marriage and I would kind of, you know, just think that other people had a more spiritual marriage than us. And I would think like, oh, wow, you know, and sort of look up to them like, oh, that's what I want. And so I would even fuss and argue with my husband about it. I mean, like just stupid stuff. Why are you arguing about something like that? Like, and he would always say, no, I pray, you know, I pray on my own. And then I pray, sometimes he would pray with me, but it wasn't like, you know, like I would hear other couples every day and like, oh, before we leave the house, we come together and pray for 20 minutes, you know? And so it was that type of thing. And so I would just get a little bit, you know, jealous of other couples and like, well, why is my marriage not like this? And why is my husband not doing this? Because he's the head and he's supposed to be the leader and he's supposed to do all of this stuff. So I would really kind of rail on him at times and look down on him at times because I felt like, oh, well, you're just not spiritual. You're just not up here where I am. Never mind that I was just as childish and as foolish as he was. Um, would you say, Lynette, y'all was ugly with them, but funny it was throwing scripture. Yeah, I mean, we did it. So basically, um, you know, never mind that I was being childish and being immature and, and all that other stuff as well. But here I am looking at myself like, you know, I'm I'm little Jesus Jr. in the marriage. And he's just like, you know, the spawn of, of Lucifer walking around my house. Because I was thinking, oh, well, you know, as the head, and he's not, you know, asking or, or coming to me to pray every day. So something is wrong with him. And then one time we had this huge, well, not huge, but it was a nice size marriage event at our um, old church where we were both on staff. And so we had this event. And we had these couples come from all over, these well-known couples who had written books and done seminars and all these different things. And so I was talking to one of the couples and I was like, oh, you know, I've been asking my husband to pray with me every day, but he don't do it. And they said, well, who said that you have to do that? Like, why are you putting him down because of that? They were like, we don't do that every day. We come together and we pray and we do it as much as we can, but we don't put that pressure on each other that you have to do this thing in order for our marriage to be great, in order for our marriage to be spiritual. And so I just kind of looked at them like, what? And then I was like, they not spiritual. I'm more spiritual than them. Like I'm, they telling me that, no, we don't have to, you know, I still had that sort of haughty mindset of like, I'm up here because I'm desiring the things of the Lord and they're down here and he down there with them because they talking about, oh, well, 
we don't do that every day. And why does he have to do that? Like, you know, just come together when you can, as much as you can, but don't force yourselves every single day. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, why would you say that to me? We're newlyweds and we're Christians and we're supposed to have this great prayer life. And so together, together. And I was just going on him and looking down on him because we didn't. And what is interesting is God began to deal with me on how I was looking at him and on how I was viewing things. It was for me saying, let's pray every day. It was all about works. I wanted it to look good. I wanted to, I wanted it to look spiritual. I wanted it to look like we had it all together. And it was all about those works and those things that would make our marriage look like that it was so big and so spiritual and so great. And actually we pray more together now without me asking him to do that every day than we did back then with me just harping on it all the time. And so it kind of, you know, it kind of made me change the way I looked at it. Um, and so it kind of made me change even like how I talk to other wives when they come to me. Now I'm that one, like when they're like, mm, girl, and he don't go to church and he don't even pray with me. And he just not as spiritual as I am. I've even heard people say, you know, um, God's only keeping them or him because of me and because of my walk. Um, but if I stop praying, you know, God might take him out. So I got to keep praying because God might take him out. You know, how arrogant is that? Like you, you really believe that the sun rises and sets on you and that because of you, you are just up here and your spouse is down here and really, truly only God knows the heart of a man. Only God knows the heart of a person and only God truly really knows what's going on on the inside of them. And only God really knows what their connection is um, to him, how close they are to him. And man, wouldn't it be a shame that you're doing all this talking and putting your spouse down and then find out at the judgment that, hey, they really been praying for you and your arrogant self. So, you know, you got to be careful about that. Hey, Cheryl, how are you, Minister Cheryl? So, um, 1 Peter 3, it talks about it and says, um, in the same way, 1 Peter 3 and 1, it says, in the same way, and I'm reading from the New Living Bible, it says, um, New Living Translation. It says, in the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands then even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. Whoo. So that means that um, all of my, for all of my talk that I was doing in the beginning of our marriage and all of my fussing and complaining and running, like looking down on him, that wasn't doing anything. Um, and really, he probably was thinking, you know, like, oh, I got to be the one, the spiritual one in our marriage because this girl crazy. Hey, Shirley, how are you? Um, and so pretty much um, we both have grown and we both have gotten to a place spiritually where we're not like doing that pettiness and fighting over things like that, um, where we're not like putting pressure on each other just to kind of have this super spiritual marriage just for show. I mean, it's, it's, it's very real. I'm going to keep it very real. I said, this is 100 with the, with the wives. I'm keeping it very real. We, we may not pray together every single day. Literally, my husband is working. He's a police officer and he's working right now. Um, and from seven in the morning to sometimes 11 PM and he is like going, going, going. And I call him and I have a, a few words with him during the day, or I'm at work and he may call me and we have a few moments together during the day, but it's not that pressure. Like that if we don't, that something is wrong with us. And, and, and the connection or the spiritual connection is just not good with us. Um, so I, I don't put that pressure on him. And I think for some of the wives, we have to really look at like, you shouldn't, you don't want to put your husband down or 
make it seem like that you're up here and he's down here. We don't want to walk in that spirit of arrogance and make it seem like our husbands are beneath us. Um, nobody wants to feel that way. And if you really think about it, um, first Peter is talking about, listen, just, um, accept the authority of your husband. He's still the head, um, no matter what place he's at spiritually. And really, if you stop and you look at yourself in introspect, you may not necessarily be walking on water like you think you are. And so respect where he is, respect where you are and continue to work together, not just so that you'll have like some type of show or some type of, you know, um, work that shows that you are spiritual, but that you will really truly have that that um, spiritual connection in your marriage, even without you having to say every day or say all the time, like, why don't you do this? Or why don't you do that? And why don't you, you know, um, and you will see God work. Like I saw God work in our marriage. And now my husband prays for me. He's very um, open about praying for me. I pray for him. I talk to him all the time about spiritual things. Um, but like I said, do we have that time every morning where we're like, okay, let's pray. Sometimes he's up and out of the house at um, 530 in the morning because he's got to be down. Um, he's Capitol Police. He's got to be down to work at a certain um, time in the morning. So we may not even see each other until we get back in the evening or um, when we call each other, you know, sometime during the afternoon or something. So, I mean, it is what it is, but I don't run him down for that. I don't put our marriage down for that. You know what? You may have a marriage where you guys pray every single day or every single morning, and that's awesome. But it doesn't make that marriage that does any better than the marriage that doesn't. It doesn't make them any more spiritual or high up here spiritually than the marriage that is praying when they can. I remember watching Priscilla excuse me, Priscilla Shire one time. And she talked about, um, she talked about how she and her husband don't pray every day. Um, and she was saying how, you know, she heard someone saying that they pray every single day for an hour or two hours. And she was like, Oh my God, you know, I tried it. Um, because I heard them say it and she said, I lasted like 15 minutes. And then I was like, whoo, I got to go get some stuff done. And then she said, you know, she tried it the next day and she only lasted maybe a 15 minutes or a half an hour. And she's like, oh my gosh, you know, she felt like she was so not holy um, and not whole, as holy as this other woman. They say she was praying for two and three hours a day. And she was like, oh my God. And God gave her peace. Like, listen, this is where I have you and this is okay. And you shouldn't just try to do it because you see them doing it um, and try to, you know, be like her because you want to make some show of that I'm so super spiritual. And so wherever your husband is spiritually, your husband may, may be a pastor, may be a minister. He may not even go to church at all. Um, I have one friend, she said her husband watches church online, but he doesn't go um, into church when church is, um, when church was, you know, happening in the buildings and everything um, that he doesn't actually go in. And she's like, oh, I just wish, you know, you have to be in it. And I was like, you know what? Where he is, um, if he is seeking God and really worshiping God and, um, you know, don't put him down for that. Allow that to be his relationship with God. And if God wants him in the building, God will bring him in the building. But um, definitely see that he is engaging with Christ and he has a, a, a walk with Christ. And maybe you don't understand it and maybe you don't get it or maybe it doesn't look to you on the outside like it's up here. But only God can really truly judge and say where a person is spiritually. So wives, let's really make sure that we are um, valuing our husbands and lifting them up um, spiritually and not looking down on them, no matter where they are. Or even if you feel like that your husband is up here and you're down here, again, only God knows your heart. Only God knows his heart. Just let's not even try and measure and keep 
you know, some type of measurement against each other. Hey, cousin Joanne, how are you? Um, let's not try and keep that measurement going of who's more spiritual, but just come together as often as you can. Loving one another, lifting one another up in Christ and really truly being that support for your um, spouse. All right, guys, I'm letting y'all go. Love you. Thanks so much for watching. See y'all later. Take care.